Hey, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like I've died and gone to heaven. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. Wow, life is so good. Amen. <laughs> I have just been enjoying my day in the Lord. Oh, my goodness. The Word of God is so good. And I'm so thankful. Wow. I've just been... I've j Hey there, Amy. God bless you, sweetheart. I've just been letting the Word roll around in my heart today and just feeding on the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Wow. You know, the last message that I ministered, I haven't been... Uh, doing my regular Sunday morning uh, because we've been um, having companies uh, on the way, so I haven't been able to. But anyway, praise the Lord. It's all good. Glory to God. Amen. Hi to you too. Who we got here? Is that Job? Well, God bless you. Welcome. Well, I'll tell you, I got some good stuff today. I was just thinking, oh my goodness, I was thinking about the promise to Abram. And you know, the scripture says in Galatians that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hey, Danny, how are you? Uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, this is so good, okay? Get a hold of this. Hey, Danny. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed, no man disannul it, or add it there too. You can't disannul this covenant, okay? It says, now to Abraham and his seed, singular, was the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds. You can't, you can't attain unto the promise of Abraham through what you do. No, the promise was to Abraham and to his seed, which is Christ. It says, um, it doesn't say to seeds as of many, but of one to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant was confirmed before God in Christ, the law. Let me put it like this. This covenant was confirmed in Christ before the law ever came, okay? And so nothing can disannul this covenant, which was 430 years before the law. It can't disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. Okay. Jesus Christ came and he inherited eternal life through his faith in the Father. Okay. He attained it. He attained the promise of eternal life when he raised from the dead, amen, in a glorified body. And now is all we have to do is believe in Christ. Amen. And it says, it says, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Hallelujah. And verse 29 says, And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That is such good news. And you know, as I was just meditating on the word this morning, I was just thinking of all the years of toil and labor. And you know what? I'll tell you something, when you get it, when you get this glorious word, when you really get it in your heart and your heart is established in grace, wow, you know you're in and you're not out. 
uh, you're on, you, you've already, you've already been seated in heavenly places in Christ. It's all a done deal. Amen. You know, this morning, oh, I've just, so much has been rolling around in my heart. But you know, the truth of the matter is, all our lives, until we heard grace, all our lives, we heard the lie of the devil. Amen. And you know, when Jesus, let me turn to John 8. Listen to this. When Jesus came, oh man, the Pharisees, they didn't want to hear it because it was totally contrary to what they taught. Jesus was talking to them in chapter 8, and he says, he says, mm, oh boy. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, to those Jews who believe, if you continue in my word, then you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they said, um, we'd be Abraham's seed, and we'd never been in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. In other words, if you are producing the works or the effects of sin, you're a slave. Um, sin being the wrong belief system. You're believing that you have to do to be. That is what causes all the works of the flesh. You see, you are set free from the works of the flesh when you believe you already are. When you believe you're the righteousness of God in Christ, then you are set free. You are free to do what the law could never do because the law actually, um, the scripture says that the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. So the minute you think you've got to do to be, you strengthen sin in your life. Amen. So you're free from sin when you realize you're not under the law, but under grace. The scripture says, I think it's in Romans 6, 14, that sin shall in no wise have dominion over you because you're not under the law, but under grace. So grace says, kids, I see nothing wrong with you. You're perfect in my sight. You're acceptable in my sight. And when you do that, your members go to rest. Amen. It is so good, isn't it? Amen. Your members go to rest because you already are. You're at rest in God's love for you. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, it gives me goosebumps because it's just so good. I'm just enjoying myself. So anyway, he says this. He says in verse 38 of chapter 8 of John, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saying unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. What were the works of Abraham? He believed God. Amen. Hallelujah. So Jesus is saying, listen, if, if you were Abraham, if you were truly Abraham's children, you'd believe me. He says, they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. What kind of nonsense is this? You're telling me you're the children of Abraham and you want to kill me? I mean, what kind of nonsense is this? He says, he says, but you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth. Oh boy, some people just don't want to hear the truth. You know why? They are so fixated on their works. Amen. They have worked so hard that they are not going to let it go. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what. 
When you see it's the wrong way, baby, you just give it up and you go the right way. Amen. Hallelujah. It's all it can do is bring forth fruit unto death. Amen. It says, um, they said, uh, they said, well, let me read that again. But ye seek to kill me, a man that's told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. I mean, Abraham believed God. You are not believing God. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God was your father, you would love me. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Come on now. If God's really your father, you'll love me. Amen. That goes for me too. If God is your father, you'll love me. And if God is my father, I'll love you. Amen. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. How can you not love? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We got to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Amen. We got to know that we know that we know how much the Father loves us. Amen. And that love will come oozing out of every pore of your being. Glory to God. He says, uh, Jesus said unto them, If God was your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Wow, listen to that. That's right. Romans 5, 5. The love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. Woo, Jesus, the Holy Ghost. Oh, man, you know, Jesus said it's beneficial that I go. Because if I don't go, then the Holy Ghost can't come. And you know something? The Holy Ghost, he says he's with you and will be in you. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the same spirit that was in Christ. Amen. When we talk about Christ being in us, it's the spirit of God in us. Eternal life. The spirit of God is eternal life. Amen. Glory to God. You know, the spirit of God can never die. And when we've received the spirit of God, we've received the life will never die. We're joined with that spirit. That is so exciting. Glory to God. It's the power of God in our lives. When I started meditating on this this morning, that I have the same spirit in me that raised Christ from the dead. And the scripture says, if, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in your mortal body, it will quicken your mortal body. Amen. It'll make it alive. Glory to God. When I was thinking about this truth this morning, that I have the same, I mean, listen, you can say something and then you can say something. I mean, you can hear something and then you can hear something. And what I was hearing this morning was just so alive. I mean, it was just such a rhema word that I have, listen, it might sound like, what are you talking about? I know this. You can know it and you can know it, okay? And this morning, it just dawned on me that the same spirit that dwelt in Christ dwells in me. I have Christ in me, the spirit of Christ in me, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the mind of God. And as I tap into the mind of God, which is on the inside of me, and I realize that all things have been given unto me, that all things are mine, hallelujah, I mean, it just blows my mind. I think, I don't know, it was last week, Resurrection Sunday. When I'm sitting there, when I'm sitting there, and it's during worship, and it was like, the Spirit of God says to me, if my people knew the power 
of the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. And it's like, you know, it's like, well, yeah, you can say it, uh, there's power in the name of Jesus, but you want to, but stop and think what Jesus said. Jesus said, all power is given unto me. Therefore you go. He says, you will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You cast out devils. You'll tread on serpents. You will drink any deadly thing. It won't harm you. These are the signs that will follow them that believe. Now listen, this isn't saying if you believe in Jesus. This is saying if you believe what you really have been given in Christ Jesus. You're tapping into the source. You know, as I was meditating today, you know, we, we talk about Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And you think of that being external. But the truth of the matter is Christ is in us. Amen. All power. All power. And that means all. All power. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you know, when you stop and you realize it, that you have this power on the inside of you, the same power that was in Jesus Christ. And you know that you are worthy of this power because you didn't do anything to get it. It was a gift. Amen. And you utilize it, you know, back to John 1 where it says, Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, that word received lumbano to grab a hold of in order to make use of. Amen. As many as received him gave he power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I mean, wow. It's amazing. I mean, glory. Hallelujah. It's amazing. It's amazing what Christ has done for us. I don't think, I don't think, I mean, I know, I don't, I don't know the fullness of it. Amen. Because every time I get a new revelation of it, it just blows me away. So anyway, Jesus said to them, the Pharisees, he says, he says, if God was your father, you'd love me for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. You're rejecting the one he sent. He says, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He murdered Adam and Eve and abode not in the truth. He did not abide in the love of God. He fell from the love of God and he sought his own glory because he wasn't satisfied with the glory that God had given him. And it says, he speaketh not the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Do you know Satan is the father of the lie? There was no lie before it was found in him. Amen. And so the thing is, he says, he says, and because I tell you the truth, you believe not. Listen. The whole world system, the scripture says in 1 John that the whole world lies in wickedness. This wickedness is the lie that you have to do to be. And Jesus came bringing good news. But it was so contrary to the lie that they couldn't believe it. Amen. And what really hit me this morning this is the word that the Lord gave me that started this whole ball rolling this morning. In John 6, where Jesus was talking about being the bread of life. And he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can have no part of me. 
And then they got disgusted and they left. And Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit. They're breath. They're the breath of life. And they're the Zoe life of God. You cannot get this life any other way than receiving his word. Amen. And then I realized, I mean, this thing just can snowball and get so huge. Amen. But we've received the spirit of God, which is the very will and the ability of God in our lives. And as we hear the word of what we have received, then it activates the spirit in our life. It's like, it's like we have got to say amen. You know, the scripture says all the promises of God are yea and amen in him. In Christ, all the promises of God are yes and amen by us to the glory of God. Amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen in him by us to the glory of God. So when we see the word, when we see the truth of what Christ has done for us, and we say amen, yes, we are agreeing with God that spirit activates that truth in our life. It's like Mary, when the Holy Spirit said that she was going to have a child. You know, that was the word to her. But she had to agree. And she said, be it unto me according to thy word. Bam! She was with child of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to be a child by the Holy Ghost, not bringing forth a physical child, but bringing forth the fruit of God in my life. Amen. I want to see manifest all that God has promised to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. I want to see the, the, the sick healed. I want to see awesome things happen in people's lives, amen? This word of God is so powerful, praise God. Amen. It's just so wonderful. Look at this scripture in uh, 2 Peter. I love it. Remember uh, the last video I made, we were talking about the power of God. And the scripture says that in Ephesians, Unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. That power that works within us is Christ or the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. It's all synonymous. But in 2 Peter, look at this. In chapter 1, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. But you know, that should have been acknowledgement. Grace and peace is multiplied unto us through the acknowledgement of God and of Jesus Christ. According as his divine power. That divine power is the Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of us. His divine power has given unto us all things, not some things, all things that pertain unto life. That's this physical life in this world and godliness or godlikeness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us these great and precious promises that by these you might be made a partaker of his divine nature. In other words, you've got to see what God has promised you 
in order for you to say, amen, I agree with you. And then you become that partaker of that divine nature. You've got to see what's yours. You've got to, it's just back to Philemon 6. The, the sharing of your faith becomes powerful as you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ. If you don't know you have it, how can you grab a hold of it? If you don't know you have it, how can you manifest it? You first got to recognize you've got it before you can see it. You know, that reminds me of uh, what jo uh, Jesus said in Mark 11. Hallelujah. Mark 11, I think it's 21. Glory to God. When you stand praying, believe that you receive it. Yeah, it says in verse 24, Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. You got to see you got it before you can get it. Because it's not coming from out there, it's coming from in here. So you have to acknowledge you already have it before you will see the manifestation of that thing. Amen? We've received all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's time to discover the treasure that we have on the inside. The treasure to be found is not out there. The treasure to be found is right in here. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm so excited. I'm just, glory, I'm just so, so excited to just think. Just, just meditate. Just stop and think that you have the same spirit on the inside of you that raised Jesus from the dead. I mean, stop and think about it. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living on the inside of you. What problem do you have that that spirit cannot overcome? Amen? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greater one is living on the inside of us. Amen. Glory to God. The scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? We got it made in the shade. Hallelujah. Amen. As he is, so are we in this world. But you know what? They are words on a page. That has to become a living reality in our heart. As he is, so am I. Amen. Hallelujah. And the minute that you say that, if there is any diseased conscience on the inside of you, when you say that, as he is, so am I, you will think, but what about this? What about that? You're looking at your flesh. And the thing is, Christ wants us to be Christ conscious, not sin conscious. Amen. He doesn't want to know ourselves after the flesh. Remember what Paul said, 2 Corinthians 5? He said, the love of Christ constrains me because I thus judge. If one man died, which is Christ, then all men are dead, that henceforth we know no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. And the thing is, if you don't know yourself after the spirit and you're knowing yourself after the flesh, then it's going to be impossible to know everybody else after the spirit because you're going to judge them the same way you judge yourself. Amen. So we got to be free from all of this nonsense. Amen. And live the high life, the good life, the Christ life, the only life that there is. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm blessed. You're blessed. We're all blessed. We're having a good time in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm going to say au revoir. Good night. 
Have a blessed evening. And I'm going to go and make my husband some supper. So God bless you all. And have an awesome weekend. God bless. Bye-bye.